Um, another thing you talk about that I was so thankful for as well, um, was your battle with depression and mm -hmm. you, um, you said standing in the spotlight is exhausting. Standing in the spotlight without being healthy is dangerous. And you talk a lot in your book about that danger that your life kind of unraveled into, um, when was, what was your wake up call that this depression was overtaking your life? <clears throat> when it did, <laughs> when it overtook my life, um, I didn't read the signs. So, um, you know, I had a lot of signs, but first of all, if you don't know the signs, you don't know to read them. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I'll, when you're a social drinker, you're not thinking that your drinking is picking up. You know what I mean? And so you're not, you're not thinking about that. You're just thinking, yeah, my drink is picking up, but I, I mean, you're just like, oh yeah, I can, my tolerance level is going up. You're not thinking like I am coping, you know, you're not thinking that. Um, and <clears throat> when you are, um, you know, constantly ruminating and meditating on all the negativity that's going on and you, you don't see that as a sign. Mm. Um, when your, your attitude is that more of cynicism and pessimism than optimism or like you, there's no hopeful perspectives, that's a sign. I didn't read any of those signs. So I kept fueling my depression. And, um, and then when you add shame to the cocktail, now you're done. So that's kind of what it was for me. It was once I kind of threw God away, I said, uh, you know, the gloves are off. I'm just going to live. And I incurred, you know, I started racking up the mileage of things that were out of character for me. You know what I mean? It's just like you're racking up the mileage and you can tell yourself, like I told myself for so long, I mean, what's wrong? If there's no God, then what is wrong? You know, is it wrong to, to pop these pills right now? Is it wrong to get belligerent drunk tonight? Is it wrong, you know, to uh, be a glutton or in, indulge in pornography? What is wrong? You know what I mean? And so I started racking up the shame mileage and I woke up one morning and it was like, it wasn't a dark day. It wasn't like, I feel sad today. It was, I am incapable of feeling joy at all. Mm. Like I couldn't laugh. I could watch the funniest movie I've ever seen in my life. No, like nothing. Mm. And I knew something was wrong. It was like, oh, this is weird. It was like a twilight zone. So I'd entered what is called a clinical depression. And I thought it would go away, you know, a couple of days, two days, three days, four days, nine, 10, two months. I am tripping. And so uh, it was at that point in time, I realized I got to get some help. Yeah. You talk a little bit about the struggle with letting your friends in. And I think that's a struggle with um, a lot of people in the world. And I can only imagine the struggle would be with someone as this, you know, celebrity of not wanting to let, look weak, not wanting yeah. people to know that you can't do this. Were you continuing to live your everyday, go to work, be married, take care of my kids, text yeah. my friends life? Yeah, I was. And, and the problem for leaders is leaders think they have, they can figure everything out. And so I thought I could figure it out. And, and I thought I, I was too afraid to reveal the chinks in my armor, you know, because I'm the one that's supposed to have it all together. I'm the one that's supposed to have the answers. I'm the one that's supposed to be on point. And, uh, and, I, and I could not admit that I was failing drastically. So you begin to convince yourself of how to navigate this and how to process this. And listening to yourself is one of the most dangerous things you can do because you just tell yourself the most ridiculous things. You know, if you don't have other people to bounce these ideas off of, you just can believe some of the dumbest things possible. Um, and so that was my problem was uh, being too afraid to admit my weakness. One, you're afraid that people will turn their back on you and that they'll say, oh, not you. And you've already had that happen to you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. Trauma. So, so you're afraid of that. And then you're afraid of your worth, you know, diminishing and somehow you are a worthless individual. Um, but the most healing thing, there's just, there's more healing in confession than suppression. So that is where my healing process began when I was just honest and transparent and, and could now work on the things that were going on in my life.